All right, what's going on, boys and girls? This is a reaction video to a reaction for my latest reaction video. Um, I'll get into some more topics on that entire subject in a bit. So, as I say, one of my videos for my Linux reaction series was asked to be pulled down because it was unoriginal and non transformative work, even though I added 10 minutes of commentary on top of said person's content and gave them adequate time to uh, discuss their points in their video and I left pretty much what I said to the end because the whole point is to react the first time to a video but whatever I don't feel like dealing with the copyright stuff it's just not worth the headache so anyway long story short video has been pulled down but the person who did the original video has since put up another video that well I'm going to go old school with and actually do a rebuttal video too or video responses for those of us who remember those where you click the little video response button and you go from there so this person came out with a list three reasons you may not want to switch or may not want to use Linux and I listened to this video and essentially it is the same fucking FUD or fear, uncertainty, doubt for those that don't understand what that means, that I have been hearing since Mandrake when I used that. And just as a little FYI, Mandrake was an RPM based distro that turned into Mandriva, not Arch. Just gonna say, Mandriva is an RPM distro. So the simple fact of the matter is though, they give three reasons and it's the same stuff I've been hearing. It, it is the typical, you know, oversaturation, too many choices, uh, software and hardware incompatibility. I've heard all of these for the last 15 years. And the simple fact of the matter is a lot of the stuff that this person brings up is because they don't understand what they're talking about. As an example, okay, so let, let's get into reason one. Reason one that he gives is that too many choices or oversaturation in the market. That there's too many desktops and there's too many distro choices. So let's get into the, the, the desktop options, you know. First off, it's not Xenode, it's Xmonad. And it's not a desktop environment. It's a tiling window manager. There is a difference between a window manager and a DE or a desktop environment. If you were going to throw in a seventh one, I would personally probably set it enlightenment. But seeing how that's nitpicking, according to some people, uh, the whole point of all these different desktops and tiling window managers and window managers is to meet the requirements of the user and the hardware. I'm not going to take like my HP Mini uh, Note 2140, which is from 2009, late, 2000, uh, late 2009, early 2010, and try to install a KD54 based distro on it because the hardware is not going to run very well with it. Instead, I'll probably download something with Enlightenment, or I might run Fluxbox, or IceWM, or FEWM Crystal, or any of those types of things because it can run better on the hardware. That's the whole point of the desktop environments. Now you have KDE, which is a bigger project, and you have GNOME, which are bigger projects. But the simple fact of the matter is I don't think you understand why there are so many. Each one fits a different niche and genre and what it needs. Too many choices on the, the distros. Oh, well, you can whop off the top 10 and, you know, you, you give the, essentially the grocery store analysis. Uh, how many different things of, you know, solutions for food are there in a grocery store? That is the best analogy to come up with. There's freaking 100 different cases of types of pet food. Simple fact of the matter is the grocery store doesn't sell them all, but they provide at least a hundred of the different fucking selections for it, don't they? <laughs> so the 
I think the biggest thing, though, with this topic is it is so easy to wade through all these options in Linux if you understand what the base distros are. If you understand the differences between a few of the desktop environments and probably the seven or eight core base distros that you need to know, which, to me, Red Hat, Fedora, uh, OpenSUSE, Arch, Gentoo, Slackware, Debian, Ubuntu. Those are essentially your core distributions. If you know the how stuff works packaging wise, you pretty much know the difference and you can find out what distros to use and what distros not to use for a new user. So let's roll into the number two, software compatibility. This one's, I can sum up really quickly. Do I go to iOS expecting Android apps to work? Do I go to iOS expecting Android apps to work? Or iOS apps to work on Android? Do I expect to run iLife on Windows? Do I expect to run certain Windows apps on Mac? No, fucking no, no, and no. So why in God's fucking green hell do people seem to think that you can run all your Windows apps on Linux? Yes, it is great to be able to have the potential to do that with things like crossover and play on Linux. But that is a solution for not everyone. When you switch platforms, you have to be open-minded to switching to the alternatives. And if you're not willing to switch the alternatives or try the alternatives, then maybe switching the platform isn't right for you. And that's okay. But to essentially say, I can't run this, so I'm not going to try this, that is closed-minded and fucking moronic. Number three, hardware compatibility. Depends on your hardware. Now you talk AMD, <laughs> you talk NVIDIA, and you talk Intel. So this could take a longer than I'd like. Intel does great work. Problem is some of their stuff does not work. Uh, there's been a lot of issues with Skylake. Um, some some of the newer stuff coming down the pipeline is supposedly officially supporting Windows 10 only. Um, then you have things like the whole hubbub around Intel and the Lenovo IdeaPad Yoga 900 that you can't install Linux on because it uses a special RAID configuration that's on Intel. Bay Trail and Linux don't play nice mostly because of the uh, GPU and how that is worked out. So while I applaud a lot of the work Intel does, they still have a ways to go and stop shooting themselves in the foot. NVIDIA. NVIDIA provides the best proprietary driver solution currently on Linux. NVIDIA provides documentation for the Tegra system on a chip stuff. I give them props on that. Here's the problem. If you want a better out of the box experience on Linux, you're better off with an AMD card. If you want to use open source drivers, don't use NVIDIA because I'll be blunt while I appreciate the hard work that the folks over at the Nuevo Driver Project do as far as reverse engineering these drivers from NVIDIA without any of their documentation the, the open source Radeon or whatever the hell they're calling it the drivers from AMD are actually better for if you want a better out of the box gaming experience quote unquote, because AMD provides the documentation, whereas NVIDIA doesn't. NVIDIA, while great on a proprietary solution, is terrible at the open source portion. When it takes the creator of the kernel of the OS telling you, fuck you, NVIDIA, you are one of the worst companies I've worked with, that's pretty damning. Just Just look before Linus Torvalds flips off NVIDIA and watch the video as soon as so he br as someone brings up Optimus and Linux. So, there's your take on that. AMD. 
and as I said, AMD provides the documentation. Their proprietary drivers, regardless of OS, have always been terrible. This goes back to days where they were fucking ATI. Their drivers have never been good. So, it's a moot point. I have an AMD FX 8320. Guess what? 8 core runs perfectly fine as a Linux box. <laughs> so, the simple fact of the matter are like, all these groups, though, are part of the Linux Foundation. So, the fact that you think just because they're on the Linux Foundation makes them good citizens isn't the case. In fact, NVIDIA is probably the worst of the bunch as far as that. Uh, props to their good stuff that they do do, don't get me wrong. But you can't judge how good someone is based on whether or not they're in the, in the Linux Foundation or the level of contribution money-wise they, they are at the Linux Foundation. Because at the end of the day, th think about it this way. Microsoft is on the Linux Foundation. Fucking Microsoft. Let that sink in. So that's the three reasons you give. It's all the same FUD I've heard for the last 15 years. And I'm going to drop some advice onto you. If you're providing tech solutions and you are a consultant or a PC repair guy or whatever, what you're going to want is to not be a closed-minded, short-sighted, rose-colored glasses kind of person. Don't have blinders on because from what I'm hearing, one of the things you said in this video was, well, this is why I stick with Windows and Windows 8.1. If it works for you, great. Your job, though, as a solutions provider, is to look at all the fucking solutions. Not just one or two of them or be like some Windows admins where all I see is Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. That is dumb, that is stupid, that is short-sighted. You're limiting your customer growth as far as who you can service. You're limiting your customers' the options, which is dumb. And you're limiting yourself as far as growing in, as a person, as a tech, as in a knowledge base. And you're potentially making business opportunities go away. And that's, that's dumb. That is out and out dumb. So, my take is quite simply, don't be short-sighted. Provide the best solution to the customer. Your job as a tech is to point them in that right direction. Find the perfect solution for them and for whatever use case they're running into. And if they can't switch, they can't switch. But you at least you know, let them have the options and laid the options in front of them. That is your job. So until you get to that point, I'm gonna have a hard time taking pretty much any of these lists from people like this seriously anytime soon. So you guys know what to do. Rate it, subscribe, peace.